That was just part of my acorn collection. I'll show you some more of it a little later. Do you ever have a day when you can't think of anything interesting to do? Well, I thought it might be fun to think up some ideas that you can do with just odds and ends around the house. And acorns are something that a lot of people have lying around the house. You go on a nature walk and pick up a pocket full and bring them home and lay them on the shelf and don't get around to doing anything with them for a while. So we're going to find out some interesting things to do with acorns. But first, I have a little dish on the table with some you know, parts of plants growing in it. Have you figured out what those are, Cardin? No. <laughs> Let's take, there, I'll take one and look at it and see if you can figure out what it is. How about you, Joe? That's pretty tricky. I don't know whether you could guess what that one is. I think I know. It's sort of, um, it's not a potato. Well, here, this one has another, has a hint on it. Oh, though. I think, oh, um. Marshmallow? No. Well, marshmallows don't grow, do they? <laughs> oh, I know what they are. <laughs> it has to be something that was growing. Can't think of it. Yeah, I thought maybe that purple. Do you know a vegetable that's purple, grows in the ground? Yes. It's purple and white, and if you like them, you really are very fond of them. If you don't like them, then you really don't, you really don't like them. You, know, you either like them or you don't like them. Most people are not halfway between. I like to eat them raw, and sometimes I grate them up and mix them with mayonnaise, and raisins have a nice slaw. I like them better raw than cooked. Oh, a turnip? Right. <laughs> That's what this one is. And this is an idea for you to do with something that might just get thrown away and you can make it last a little while longer and get something good to eat or throw in your salad because you can eat the leaves of turnips hmm. and there's just enough food left in the top this turnip top to make this many new leaves grow right off take a little piece and taste it joe joe it's just a little a little uh, a little peppery but not too really good mm. so that's one way to get some turnip tops to freshen up your salad now this other vegetable isn't a turnip because it's not purple and I don't know whether you ever, ever have this at your house have you ever heard of parsnips no now, well parsnips are a really great vegetable they look they're shaped like carrots they're about that long and they grow down the ground but they're yellowish they're not orange and if you if you're having parsnips for supper, just get your mother to save the little piece she slices off the top and put it in a little shallow dish like this with water. And keep an eye on it. And in a few days, you'll have lots of little greens. I don't know how parsnip tops taste. I'll try one. I don't think I'd want them in my salad. They're a little strong. But turnip tops are really good. And do you know some other vegetables you can try, the, try this trick with? Potato. Right, except you don't cut the tops off potatoes. Yeah. You cut the, you just take an eye out of it. Or just a, or a whole potato you can put in a dish of water and watch it grow. And a sweet potato. But you can do carrot tops that way, and radish tops, and beet tops. Any vegetable that has a long root in the ground that you use, just slice off the top, leave a little bit to provide food, and it'll grow and give you something interesting to watch in your spare time. So that's one idea, if you have anything like that in your refrigerator. Now, what do you think this is? Well, on the 
figure shape looks sort of like a walnut. Right. And that's one way you can get ideas from nature, even if you don't use the real nature things, like I use the turnip top and the parsnip tops here to grow. Mm -hmm. One of my friends likes to do ceramics, and she got the idea of making a big walnut. And it's a dish you can keep things in. And I got it, I got it a long time ago from a little boy that I used to teach in kindergarten. Can you read what it says? To Miss Jean from Kevin. Kevin. Kevin's grandmother helped him make it in her kiln. Which is 1966. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I like it. Even though I dropped it and broke it and I glued it back together, it's really nice to keep all kinds of treasures in. A great big walnut with a little teeny squirrel oh, sitting up. So if you like to make things out of clay and you don't know quite what to make, you can look around and get some ideas from some nature things you have around the house. And you might not be able to make a, a dish, but you can make a, a solid walnut and a little squirrel on top of it. Yeah. Well, would you like to go over to the discovery table and see some other ideas for ways to have fun on days when you might be looking for something to do? Okay. okay. Laura, you want to come too? Do you ever have a terrarium at your house? Yes. How about you, Joe? Have you ever made a terrarium? This is a terrarium, you know. A terrarium is a, a garden in a jar, and it has a lid. I took the lid off today so we could see into it. But sometimes when you've had your terrarium growing for a long time, you look in there and you see some things are doing fine, like the ferns. Can you see the ferns are putting out new fronds? Yes. But and there's a spider in there. Is there a spider? Oh, yes, for heaven's sakes. I didn't know he had moved in. Look at that, Carton. See? Oh. <laughs> he made himself right at home. Come on. Let's see. We can get a... He's not, he's not a very big spider. There, he went right back in. No, he didn't either. <laughs> Scared. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Well, you know... Let's leave him alone a Joe. Okay. See, when spiders get scared, they turn over on their backs and pull all their legs in and play dead like a possum. And then, then, then they think that their enemies will leave them alone, and we probably will. But before we put him back in his um, home, that's a good chance to get a good look at him. He looks just like a little brown ball, doesn't he? Yes. And if you were a bird or something else that ate spiders, you'd probably just ignore him, right? Mm -hmm, right. <laughs> because he, he doesn't, doesn't even look alive. Well, that was a surprise. So that I forgot to think about that, that when you look in your terrarium, when you haven't looked in it for a long while to see how it's doing, you might get a surprise and see something that wasn't there when you made it. Let's see if I can pick him up quietly, quickly, and put him back in. He's, he's still pretending to be dead. Aren't you afraid of spiders, Joe? No. <laughs> that one's a bite. Well, I've got news for you. All spiders can bite, but only a couple are dangerous. I think we got him in that time. Yes. I can feel the web. But well, what I was going to say before we discovered the spider was that when you look in your terrarium and you see that it needs a little brightening up, there's one favorite trick I have. And that is to make a little, take an acorn cap. You know, there's one for you to look at, one for you. And make a, another little garden with lichens in an acorn cap. See, like that. I always have some lichens around from a field trip. You know what kind these are, Carden? Um. What do they look like? Moss. Well, they yeah, they're sort of, sort of. Usually, find them in, the, in some of the same places you find moss. But look at each one of those, and does it remind you of something you used to get? I know your brother used to work at a certain kind of store, and he dipped stuff up and put it in little shapes like this. Ice cream. <laughs> Right. Don't they remind you of ice cream cones? But uh, whoever first discovered them thought they looked like little cups that pixies drank out of. You know what a pixie is? A little, um, sort of like an owl. Right. Is that right, Joe? <laughs> you ever heard about pixies? Mm -mm. Well, pixies are sort of like fairies and elves and goblins. They're little imaginary creatures that are supposed to run around in the woods, really tiny. 
and these look like the perfect little cup for a little imaginary creature to drink out of. So they're called pixie cups, pixie cup lichens. So I'm going to put a little, few pixie cups in the acorn and set it right in here to liven up the terrarium. And I have some other lichens over here I thought you and Joe might like to put in your acorn cups. Just break off a big enough piece and you can break off the stem of, the, of that acorn. Here's a pretty red one for you, Joe. These are called British soldiers. Oh, I've heard of those. You've heard of those, right, because they have red tops on. Why don't you put the, plant the lichen in the acorn first and then stick it in, okay? I don't think that would be a good idea. All right, that's it. Put it in a place right so we can look in. There, now doesn't that brighten it up? Yes. And look, that, that adds more interest. And sometimes I like to just take a, an acorn, see if that one fits, and just lay it, you know, when you're making a terrarium, you try to make it look like a little woods or a little field or a little swamp, wherever you got the plants. Right. And this one's supposed to look like a little woods. And in a wood, you see acorns lying on the ground, right? Well, um, I saw on this show there's um, these two little boys, they um, found a um, sort of like a little lizard or something, and they made a little home for it at, out of a terrarium. To make it look, they might try to make it as much like the place they found him. It could have been a lizard or it could have been a salamander. That's yes. right. It's nice to have little animals in your terrarium. I've never seen a little nest like that. You've never seen it? Well, g good. It does look like a little nest, doesn't it, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> but when you look at it from all sides, what do you think it is? An, a special kind of acorn. Everybody knows about acorns, but I don't think everybody knows that there are about 300 different kinds of acorns in the world. It's mm. a lot. Isn't that a lot? And I'm not sure how many we have around here, but we have quite a few. And this one came from not, not too far away from Hodgepodge Lodge, and it's called the Mossy Cup Acorn because feel around the edges. It feels like moss, especially when it's fresh. It feels like moss. So that's one kind of acorn. I don't know what happened to the acorn, but that's just the cat. And here is another pretty big fat one, don't you think? Mm. That came from the red oak tree. And these, the ones that, that used the cups from, those are really funny, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> nice and long. <laughs> nice and long. Let me see where all those. And the only way you'll see one of these around here is if someone has planted one, because these really grow in England. Mm. But when you find a tree that someone's planted and it's doing very well, it has lots of acorns on. And that's, I have some for you to make something out of. So let me give you an idea. Here's a, mm -hmm. my friend Ace made that for me. And can you guess what it is? A, a pony? Right. Oh, he'll be so pleased that you guessed, Card. <laughs> but he used four acorn, four English oak acorns for its legs, one for its body, half of one for its neck, one for its head, and then he took a little, two little pieces and made ears, ears and a long strip <laughs> of the acorn for his tail. And so that's Ace's little acorn horse. Nice. Yeah, and that took a little time. And I have another friend who likes to make dolls out of different kinds of things. And its body, this doll's body is a peanut, but its face is an acorn, is an acorn with a face painted on. So that's another idea to make a face. Now here's my whole supply of English oak acorns. Oh, there's one thing that I thought you might like to do. And I... I hmm, what, right! Would you like to put a face on that one, Joe? I'll yeah. give you a pen and card. Would you like to put a face on, yeah. on that one? Because that's something else you can do if you have an acorn that's big enough to fit over your finger. Not you know, big enough. It's bigger than... Is it bigger than your finger? Well, I have a, it's a tight squeeze on my finger. <laughs> and while you're doing that, um, it might be a good time to, re to tell you about 
all the acorns are divided into white oak acorns and black oak acorns. And if you look inside your acorn and see that it's smooth inside, did you feel that yours was smooth inside, Joe? Did you notice yes. it was smooth? Yeah. Look at mine. Yeah. <laughs> He's cute. I bet you could go one step further even and make him a little hat when you get home. Or maybe we could even put on his own hat that came off the oak tree. That was a little big. Yeah. <laughs> How does yours look? Garden. What kind of a face did you put on yours? A happy one. Oh, a happy mm -hmm. face, right? <laughs> and he just looked like he's trying to say something. He had a nose. <laughs> so you can make a whole family and have them on all your fingers. Yeah. Did you notice that inside your acorn it's smooth? Yes. yes. Smooth. And uh, somewhere around here I had a piece of a, of a black ac oak acorn. So you could see that black oak acorns from the black oak group are fuzzy inside. There's a, there's a bigger piece that you can see is smooth. <laughs> now while I'm looking for that, you can get started on a, a necklace. Oh, here's a, one of those dolls that my friend makes. That's the beginning of it so you can see how she fastens the acorn onto the peanut. That's my friend Daisy Welsh that lives up in Pennsylvania. Here's some with holes drilled in them, Cardin. And you might have to see, to uh, be careful. Let's see, put the first one on, then I'll help you tie a knot so it won't fall off. And Joe, I thought you might like to try a, an acorn collage. You know what a collage is? Cardin, can, do you know what a collage is? Well, it's, um, it's a little, um, I'm going to take cardboard and right. um, take some cardboard <laughs> and take a lot of things or pictures and put bunch them together. Right, and make a, a picture that after it dries you can hold it up. What do you use to hold the things onto the cardboard? Glue. 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 Right. Okay, one way, Joe, is just to make a dribble the glue around. That saves a little time. Dribble it around where you think you might want to put your stuff and then you can then you don't have to put glue for each individual one. And here are some big acorns from the English oak. Oh, don't take cartons that have the hole in them. Excuse okay. me. You take them out of this dish. Okay. <laughs> These are for collages. Yeah, those are for collages. And use some of the acorn caps, too. Okay. Anything you think would make a nice, nice design. And I think I got an idea. You think you... Oh! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. I need you may. some more glue. Okay, you may have a little trouble uh, getting something to stand up, waiting for the glue to dry. Oh, and here's something else you might want to put in your collage. Since Aurora is, is molting these days, I found a lot of these feathers lying on the floor, and I thought you might want to use them yeah, in your collage. Look. Oh, that boy, that's going to be a 3D picture if you can get that to work. <laughs> it's going to come up and out. So, why don't you remember that idea, Joe? And uh, oh, it's gonna it's gonna work at least for a while. Okay. Here's some smaller acorns. These are from the willow oak. That's in the black oak group. You might want to use some of them, and you might even want to put on a, li a leaf. These are the leaves of the. Let's see if we can find a small one. They're nice and fuzzy underneath too. Feel that? Yeah. These are the leaves of the English oak. Oh. The, well, maybe maybe a better way to get it home and, and work on that. You might be able to prop it up better. Well, I'm gonna hold this. Did you notice my necklace, Carden? Oh, that's pretty. That my friend um, friend up in in uh, Dennis sent me from New York. He used acorns. I'm not sure what kind of acorns he used, and then he used galls from goldenrod Ooh. to make variety. The hardest part is punching the holes, I found out, mm -hmm. getting the holes in the acorns. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a pretty heavy necklace, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> let's, see, let's see how much it, it weighs. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you might want to uh, have those big ones in the middle and then finish up with, uh, with small ones on the ends. But that's pretty. Those are a, a, a different color. I guess it's probably never stay here. 
No, I, why don't you, uh, that's a good idea, and I, and I think you could do it, but you would have, it would take a lot of time. So why don't you go ahead and put some other acorns and caps on, and then you can work out that idea when you get home and have, have more time, okay? We'll just keep this here because it's all stuck. Right, right, that's fine. And then here are some of the willow, willow oak acorns. They came from Florida. And I have another kind down here. I don't have 300 kinds of oaks. I only have about four kinds today. Oh, here's the inside of that red oak. Now, you can feel how fuzzy that is. Man, is it really fuzzy. <laughs> so remember that acorns in the black oak group have fuzzy fuzzy stuff inside their shells, and acorns in the white oak group are smooth inside their shells, inside the, the nut. Hey, look, I can do this. Put, a, put this face on here and stick it out. Well, sure, but I think you're going to have to hold that, too. <laughs> I think you better concentrate on doing things sideways for a while till you have a little more time. Oh, no. Do you know what kind of people used to eat a lot of acorns? What kind of people used to live all over the United States before Columbus? Indians. Indians, right. And they found out that the acorns from the white oak group, of course, they didn't have any, any English acorns then, <laughs> because the English people hadn't brought their oak trees over yet. But the wh regular white oaks and the swamp white oaks are what they used. I'm going to get those little off. Oh, that's no problem here. I'll wipe your puppet's face. Maybe his eyes will come off and you'll have to start over again. But. You have to have a few precautions if, to, before you can eat acorns. The acorns of the white oak group are, are okay to eat when they're fresh, but they're better if you uh, boil them and leach them out, boil them and roast them, and then grind them up into flour and make bread. That's what the Indians found out. And the acorns of the black oak group, like that big fat red one, are very bitter. And if you ate a lot of them, they would make you very very sick. So, uh, it's going to be a good hat. Yeah, right. <laughs> it looks like a beret, like a tam, <laughs> like artist wear. This could be a good bottom. Would you like to try a collage carton? Okay. Now that you've used up all the ones that I punched the holes in. Uh-oh. Upset the horse. I'll just leave this over here. That's a nice job, Carden. Hmm. And while I was thinking of ways to have fun with acorns, look what came in the mail. Hey, acorns <laughs> on it. Somebody who designed stationery thought up a, a nice way to decorate an envelope with acorns on it. This is a letter I got from a friend in England. And those look just like these, don't they? They look like the red oak acorns. Yes, they do. <laughs> so that's another way to have fun with acorns, to use them when you're making a picture or a design of some kind. Maybe if you use some of these little ones, Joe, they'll, um, they'll stick better. Little ones from the... Um, one side will be big ones and one side will be little ones. Okay. This will be the separator. <laughs> the dividing line. There's only one more to fit in here. Hey, this is already stuck. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right. And, oh, yes. You just have to be sure that it's good and dry before you give it to your mother for a present or try to hang it up anywhere. And don't forget about Aurora's feathers over here. Aurora, did you ever know any of your feathers were going to be made into a collage? Want your head scratched? <laughs> yeah. I got an idea. <laughs> And put this through glue and stick mm -hmm. it over here. Oh, right. That'll probably stay. Be sure you get plenty of glue on it. There isn't any glue. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's nice, Garden. Thank you. <laughs> now, you see anything else that you would like to use? Mm -hmm. Well, you could use. The caps. The caps, right, or even the twigs. Yeah. The twigs. And that, that's, a, that's a funny thing about these English acorn caps. They have Look. long stems on them. Most acorns don't have that. Isn't that neat? Yeah, I like these. They make them. You I like know. those because they're so 
English acorns are the only acorns I know, English oak acorns, that have a long stem like that. Oh, now, Carden, you're getting very clever. You made a little balancing stand for your puppet. <laughs> now, let me put a few of these little acorns out there. The entire table's getting a little crowded. Got a lot of ways to make things with acorns. Right. Okay, that's a, and you live right near a woods, Joe. I know. You probably could find some. Though who? I got a lot of them in a tree. In the fall, they really fall down. Right, and who do you see out there in the fall gathering them? Not Indians, but but squirrels. Oh, but squirrels. squirrels, right? So if you, you have to, that's that's a good thing to remember that if you want to collect acorns, you've got to get out there before the squirrels or at the same time the squirrels do, if you want to be sure to get a nice supply. Need some now, this, now this glue is drawn before you can get it. Well, maybe you need a little fresh bunch of glue. Hey, look, this could be a fence around it. Right. right. And I can, like, make a couple animals in here. Right, it looks like a corral. Good. Maybe you can find some little acorns and make a little tiny horse to be in your corral. Asa's horse would need a big corral. I put a little hat on the puppy. <laughs> oh, yeah. so you did. I need some more babies. Some, what, what do you need? Big the, ones. The big, the big acorns? Like these. Yeah. Oh. English oak acorns. Yeah. <laughs> English oak acorns are long and shiny, and they belong to the white oak group. And how do they feel inside? Soft. Soft. Smooth. They, they feel smooth. No, the black ones feel, yeah. the black oak group feels fuzzy, and the English ones feel, feel smooth. And also, the white oak, the English oak acorns have tougher tops than yeah. the black oaks. Look, I can do that. Well, do you think you've got a f few ideas for the next time you feel bored around home? Yes. <laughs> Good. I hope you've gotten a few ideas th today for things to do the next time you feel bored. Look around home and see if you can fish some radish tops or carrot tops or parsnip tops out of the sink and make a little garden or do something with acorns and come back soon again. This program was made possible through funds contributed by members of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Pre-recorded in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting.